Remember what I said? I'm trying to give you a gift. I'm trying to point out something. To Just like I noticed it, so did those other people. And I said, you have a choice. You get to take this from me in kindness, or I'll write a letter to Lakeland, to the headquarters of Publix. What would you like me to do? <laughs> and I gave her a choice, just like good parents give their children. Now, let me tell you something, that that woman took a step back. The way that I did it, I deemed by a lot changed her life. Because nobody else ever confronted racism with her before. And I said to her, listen, I recognize that we live in a Eurocentric world, and if you don't know what that means, it means a world that's white dominated and white people have more rights than colored people, people of color, I said. Um, and, and just be aware, be aware of that when you're doing customer service. And she actually said, Thank you. She said yes, brother. A couple of weeks ago, I experienced the same thing somewhere else. And all of a sudden, it was, they, all of a sudden I came in, I asked, did you have, do you have this? Oh, no. And then I'm like, I left. And I came back in. I'm like, I'm just going to telephone number for management. And then all of a sudden, they got the product. I'm like, ready? I'm like, I said, and then it's like the manager came up. He's like, uh, what, is there anything else I can do for you? Is there anything I can do for you? Meaning, if I give you this free, and I'm like, no, I just want your corporate, your, you know, district manager's number. I called the district manager. He didn't take my call. And then I called him once again the next day. And then I like, you know, I'm like, I'm, like, I'm sure you don't care about what I said this, that, and the other because it was it was in the neighborhood where mostly people of color do it. And it's like it's like they just don't value, but it's like you gotta kind of like I'm gonna let me talk to someone else who I can articulate this to. It's like it's like why is that it's like they, they think that's threatening when you articulate yourself and not because of the way you look. I don't understand this. I, I guess I can't understand, but I guess things are going to change. But what I want to do, and I'm, I'm very sorry that happened to you, brother. I, I feel your pain. What I want to encourage our family to do is that when you see it, lovingly address it. Did you notice I did not use the word confront? Because confront tends to be an in-your-face thing, right? I'm going to confront her. <laughs> You know, and even your body language, like, whoa, whoa, it's like a cobra. And it's going to snap. You know, but I want you to address it with beautiful words and eloquent speech. When we start doing that at the master, now I want to tell you, one of my students was there Saturday. And they went in the hall to ask Whitney or Osama a question. And a man said to her, you got a question? What are you doing here? And you know what he said? He said, that's exactly what I was talking about in there. He addressed it. We have got to start addressing this stuff in our community because it starts at the bottom, folks. You cannot expect Imam Tariq to do everything. And you know, people don't do it too much in front of Imam Tariq. You know, the Imam gets a, a show. People act one way in front of the imam, but as soon as they get in the parking lot, they, they, they're like a split personality. They'll run over you and fram their horn down for 10 seconds before they let up. When you see it, for the love of Allah, embrace it. I have one question. Okay. If you go to have a coffee across your work, just to have a big one cup of coffee, and the waitress white, and I am brown. What she does? She bang things. So one day, I brought the change of the coffee change, and uh, after I finish, I said, "Give me the bill." She gave me the bill. I threw it on the floor, and I said, "Pick it up. Pick it up." What you would have done to Well, I would have tried to pull her aside <laughs> and explain. You, know, you, know, you see, let, let me share this with you. The, the Quran says, return, repel evil with 
Good. 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 Did everybody hear that? I want to hear you repeat that. The Quran says, repel evil with good. good. Now, it is good for me to enjoin what is right and forbid what is wrong. But it's not good if I do what they did because now I'm on their level. Okay? Right. Now, that's my mom. And I got a bad love for her. Every day today. Every not day. a month. Not a month. We, we, it was not charity coffee. I know, you're paying for every day. I got you. I hear you. But what does the Quran say? And I call the manager too. What does the Quran say? Absolutely. Return evil for good. Education. Yes. I now, just can I one example, a simple example. I have a Mormon uh, gentleman that works with me. And I asked him, uh, what about this, the Book of Mormon uh, play that having Broadway? It's pretty offensive to the religion. So how will your community address to that? Because our community, most of the time, we go fight and kill and do stupid things there. And he says, we go to the door of the show. When the people are coming now, we give them, why don't you find out about our religion by coming to this event or by coming to our church, etc. It's pretty simple. They took it, okay, it's offensive to their religion, offensive to their beliefs. But instead of just going there and killing everybody in the theater, they go over there and tell them, find out about what happened usually. And this is what we should do. Most, more and more and more and more. People come to my office all the time when I have, you know, notes of Ramadan, when I have my Quran on the table, or something about Robert Jefferson's Quran. And they come, you know, and at the, even they joke about it. And then, you know, it, it makes much easy, much more, makes it, makes it easier to talk to them and, you know, laugh with them about our similarities and rather than differences. Here's what I want to say to that. There was an event not long ago where some people came and they boycotted the masjid. And I'm, I cannot remember where it was in the country, but they held up signs, Muslims are terrorists, blah, blah, blah. And they were, thank you, thank you. The imam went out and he invited them to come in and have dinner on them. And out of that came major release about a shift in heart because of what they experienced. Said somebody embraced Islam, right? Yeah. Yeah. Yes. And somebody embraced Islam. So, yes, I know that people's aggressions cause us to be angry. And wherever you are in life spiritually, if you cannot handle your anger, then don't react. What are you supposed to do if you get angry? Sit down. Sit down. Sit down. Don't throw the money. Go sit down in the corner. If that doesn't work, lay down. If that doesn't work, make your would do. If that doesn't work, pray. Now, we all blow it. And it's mighty humble of my mom to share about her experience in front of everybody. No, but we breathe too. We breathe too, yes. Breathe All right, brother had his hand up, and then Susan, and then I want to get back to the religion. You know, during. During Prophet Muhammad, he used to when he started uh, Islam, people used to you know walk in, do every, you know did all all kind of bad things. He never went out and started killing people. That's right. He didn't even raise a voice or a hand or anything. So I think people should understand that, that you know just because someone is depicting someone, we should not just go and you know, start killing people. Absolutely. And Susan, you had your hand up. Yeah. Um, I was in Wally World, my favorite store. Uh, <laughs> I was in there one time, this was a long time ago, and um, I hadn't been Muslim very long, and I, it, nothing worked, and I was just frustrated, and so I snapped at the young lady that came to help with the, you know, the machine, it was a go through by yourself, and I felt so guilty about it, that, which I never would have before, but it just, you know, a lot of jarring <laughs> setting, that I actually came back the next day, found her and apologized. And she was astonished. So what I found from that was if you can do dawahs in a day that's hot and sticky and everybody's in a bad mood, 
you stand in line and you see somebody behind you and they even look they look like they're ready to pop, you just say, hey, you know, you don't have very many things. Why don't you just go ahead of me? Please, it's a gift. You'll be doing me a good deed if you do that. And let them go ahead of you, and then I'll have time to let my frustrations out. Because when you do a good deed for the sake of Allah, he fills you with that good feeling. Thank you, Susan. But what you would have done to that right <laughs> <laughs> um, What I would have done to her is I would not have done anything to her. No, no. You could have asked her. What every day today. Okay, let me what tell you what I would have done, because I want to answer your question, then I want to move on. I would have said to her, more than likely, knowing me, I would have said, I would just like to share with you that it really hurt my feelings, that what I observed is that you did this for other customers, and this is how I was treated. And I just want to give you that gift of feedback. I did not feel valued as a customer. And I feel statements are the most important statements you can make if you really want to get to the point. One of the hardest things that I have to get people to realize in therapy is that when you are angry, you are not expressing your feelings. People say, but angels are feeling, and they get angry with me. <laughs> yeah, as a matter of fact, I had to buy a punch bag for my office because one time I was doing anger management work with a guy, and he pushed a hole in my office in my therapy room. <laughs> Thank God he didn't hit me. Um, but here, let me, let me try to explain this because this is value. This is a value. The very moment that homeostasis is not alive in you, that you're no longer centered. That's what you want to look at. What is the unmet need? And express what you feel. And I'll give you a great example. Let's say that I am on the men bar, and somebody walks in and says, Imam Sack shouldn't be allowed to preach. He's a thief. He's stealing money from the master. I come down, I beat the crap out of that guy. I, I do a South Side Chicago thing on him. I tear him up, boy. I get my whole gang, I said, listen, if I ain't got enough for me, I got some guys waiting outside for you. Now, what am I doing? I am reacting. But if I want to ask you something genuinely, if I step down out of the member and I say, I'm very sorry, this is interrupting the Juma, but I feel we need to deal with this. There seems to be some kind of pain here. I know that I'm very hurt. I'm trying to be a Muslim. I'm trying to live right. Brother, have I done something to you? Is there, is there something I've done that would cause you to say this? What will that do? As opposed to me beating the guy up and getting my apostasy after it. knock the wind out of his sail, maybe calm him down. How many agree with that? Yes. Some, some of you do, some of you don't. Okay. In my experience in life, if you express your feelings, yes, I think that if it was done in the massive, probably some people would faint, and then some people would think, oh my God, that's a bit because now they've gone slain in the spirit and the massive and all kinds of stuff. Try it. The next time, look inside yourself and say, what was the unmet need? Let, let me ask you this question. If I give every single person in this room every single thing they want for the rest of their life, will you ever be angry? Is anybody here that if I give you every single thing you want in this life, that you'll still be angry? Yes. 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 There are? Yes. 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 What you want and what you need are two different things. What about need then? Let's try it that way. If I give you everything you need for the rest of your life, would you ever be angry? Yes. 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 You would. Okay, I'm surprised to hear that. Because the yeah. best in in, in, my, in my experience in life, if I'm going on I-4 and somebody throws me the bird and I get angry, so I want to run them down. I'm, I'm going to chase them. I'm going I'm to hit their bump. I'm just kidding. I'm hypothetical here, okay? This is not really me. I'm just sharing. Am I reacting to an unmet need? What is my need? I want to be respected. I didn't feel respected. If I could say to that person, you know, I really didn't feel respected when you ran me off the road 
and throw me the bird. <laughs> he will be gone. Now, I'm, hypothetically, folks, can you stay with me? I know it's entertaining, but hopefully there's some value here. If I share my feelings, do you think it might shift the outcome? Yes. Absolutely. Now, if you live in the hood, this ain't going to work. Because they're going to pummel you to death. If you're a hood boy and it's the Crips and the Bloods, and you want to talk about Brother Blood, I'm a Brother Crip, and i got to tell you about this, you hurt my feelings and all of that, you're going to get pummeled to death. Anybody say amen to that? Yeah. But in the majority of where we move, if you express your feelings, you can diffuse anger. And I encourage you to do that because that's what the Quran encourages us to do. It says don't go near to anger. It didn't say don't get angry. It said don't go near to it. So the only way I can stop it is to deal with the unmet need. The feelings. You know, when you do that to me, I feel very violated. I don't feel validated. Tina could have said to me when she walked by a while ago, and I said, stop for all this. She could have come back and said, you know, brother, I don't feel validated as a Muslim woman. When the, I can give you ten texts, Quran and Hadith, that says that Allah emancipated me, when you did that, I, I felt very hurt. I didn't feel the text was alive. I felt the context was alive. Make sense? Is there value there? Yes or no? Yes. Anybody disagree? It's okay. Raise your hand if you disagree. Alhamdulillah. The pilgrims sacrificed their ordinary dress. They refrained from every kind of fighting and quarreling. They abstain from every kind of luxury. Now that used to be the case. Now what's happening is that there are five-star Hiltons across the street from National Hall where people pay fifteen and twenty thousand dollars a night and they actually sit in their room and they look at the Kaaba and they perform the they they, they believe that they can actually perform hard by sitting in that twenty thousand dollar room and say, I'm making my I'm making my toe off in my mind. <laughs> I kid you not. I kid you not, people. How many people know about this? Raise your hand. There are people that believe they can take a luxury trip to Mecca, sit in the Hilton, and complete their Hajj. I may Allah forgive us and help us. There are people, sister, I am I'm told that there are people that literally sit in the hotel they do not do talk off. Um, they actually think as long as they can see it, that's hot. So, they hold life is sacred, however humble, except in the way of symbolic and carefully regulated sacrifices, and they spend their nights in prayer and meditation. Now, what does the Messenger of Allah, Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam, say about the malls? The marketplace, the sook. Did I say it right? Sook. My Arab brothers, sook. 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 What does what does the Prophet Muhammad sallallahu alaihi wasallam say about the sook? He said that the shaitan hangs out there, and he said to avoid them. Basically, he said, "This is shopping 101 according to Islam. Go get what you need and get out of dodge." Because the shaitan is hanging there and the shaitan is going to say, you know that America runs on American Express? Uh -huh. Well, you got that America runs on American Express gold card in your pocketbook and you see that coach bag over there? You ain't got the money to pay for it this month, but you can pay it minimum payments. Yeah. And the more you look at it, the more, oh, yeah, I'm sold. I, I got that bag. Now, guys, you do the same thing. So I'm picking on the women, but the guys do the same thing. Armani suit, maybe express, whatever. When I went to Hodge, the group of me said, Brother, let's go shopping. I said, I didn't come here to go shopping. I came here to worship. You do all the shopping you want to, but don't include me in that. And literally, 
I think, I deem by a lot to correct me to say I did not spend more than 40 minutes my whole of Hodge, and that would include traveling time, to go into a place and get some jalabias to bring them back. What is jalabia? Uh, it's the thobe that we wear, the white long shirts. Oh, I thought you were talking about jalebi we eat. No, no. <laughs> <laughs> Something to wear, an Islamic piece of clothing, so to speak. All right. It is particularly encouraged Mustahab to fast on the ninth day of Dhul Hijjah, Yom Arafat. Now, it is prohibited for the pilgrim to fast on Arafat. Now, what do we know about Arafat? And this is probably in a slide later, but what do we know about Arafat for the pilgrim? It's the one thing that if you do not do, you can't fix it. You have to go to Hajj again. A lot of the things in Hajj, you can fix them. You can go back. You can redo it. You can repent. You can amend. But Arafat is an arcan. It is a pillar of the Hajj that you cannot fix if you mess up. Now they've got this great reward, the day of Arafat, and we do too. Because what do we do that day? We fast. Pilgrims are prohibited to fast, but we are given this as a special favor. The Prophet Muhammad وسلم, used to fast on this day. Uh, fasting on this day will expiate in Muslim sins for two years. I mean, you talk about a bogo deluxe. This is a bogogo. Because you get two years. You buy one and you get two. Is this not the mercy of Allah? Is this not something that we want to know about? So now, you can check with the local masjid or if you follow the moon and, and look for the full moon, if you can see the crescent tonight, I've asked questions. But according to the calculations, the day of Arafat will be the 22nd of September, which will be a Tuesday. If you fast that day, Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala will bless you with the forgiveness of two years of sins. You think that might be something you want to avail yourself to? The ninth day, the day of Arafat, is the day when Hajjuj, the Hajj pilgrims, assemble at the plain of Arafat, six miles from Mecca. Muharram, where they perform the most essential part of the prescribed duties of Hajj, namely the wukuf of Arafat, the stay in Arafat. The missing of Arafat is a pilgrim invalidates Hajj. Verbal remembrance of Allah is another meritorious act during these first ten days of Dhul Hijjah. The Prophet Muhammad وسلم, encouraged Muslims to recite a lot of tasbih and takbir during these days. The pilgrims are repeating the following. And this, I have a hard time saying this without crying. Labaik Allahumma labaik. Labaik la sharika laka labaik. Inna alhamda wanna amata laka wal muk la sharika lak. And when you go to Hajj and you hear one and a half to two million people chanting this, it will change your life. Because this is what they're saying. Oh my Lord, here I am at your service. Here I am. There is no partner with you. Here I am. Truly the praise and the provisions are yours and so is the dominion and sovereignty. There is no partner with you. This chant should be the chant of our life though. Even though it's what we say at pilgrimage, we should be saying it every minute of our life. Here I am, the Abdullah, your servant at your service. Here I am, there is no God but you. You are my sufficiency, you are my strength. Without you I cannot breathe. Without you my heart does not beat. Without you I have no food.
Ibn Umar and Abu Huraira used to go out in the marketplace during the first ten days of Dhul Hijjah reciting takbir and the people would recite takbir individually when they heard them. I, I hope that one day I'll go into halal Publix, halal grocery store, or non-halal grocery store, and I'll hear somebody saying, La Bayk, Allahumma La Bayk. La Sharika La Kalabek. Read, fast, pray, make dua, give charity and be good to your families. Seek Allah's forgiveness, not just with verbal expressions, but expression of sorrow for past misdeeds. Make firm resolutions to avoid making the same mistakes in the future. This week, I want to encourage you to give something up. And yes, some of you will say, oh, there goes Imam Sykes with the bitter. I'm not trying to add anything to the religion. I'm just trying to encourage you to practice this religion. I don't want you to tell me. But I want you to give up whatever you believe is your greatest evil this week. And when you give it up, ask Allah, oh, Allah, help me to permanently give this thing up. What do you believe? Every single, every single, let, let's face it. There are some Muslims that smoke. There are some Muslims that smoke things other than cigarettes. There are some Muslims that drink. There are some Muslims that... There, I can list a whole list of things. There are some Muslims that curse their wives out on a weekly basis, and some wives curse their husband out on a weekly I basis. I never do these things. You don't do these things? No, I'm doing love. None of it. That's good, then, then you've got an easy week. <laughs> but for those who do, I want, let me tell you that Osama shared a beautiful story Saturday. He said he went into a masjid one time, and he said this guy walked up and said, you know, brother, I've been watching you for three days. He said, oh, wow. <laughs> Watch me for three he said, and you know, you're all right, because I only saw you sit one time. <laughs> he said, brother, you think I only sit one time in three days? <laughs> <laughs> he said, bad. He said, you didn't look at me very good. I, I want to ask you, is there one person in here that does not sin every day? No. There's something that you have a tendency of doing. Knowingly or unknowingly. It doesn't matter, brother. A sin is a sin. Whether you do it knowingly or unknowingly, is there anyone here that does a sin? Elijah. I don't know. You're, you're right about that, but he can't speak for himself yet. He just, uh, uh, uh. You guys are really making it hard for me today, aren't you? No, I think... I, I want to ask you to exercise the gifts of what I'm sharing with you today. Don't walk out of here and say, oh, wow, mashallah, what, that was a beautiful part of that lecture. But I ain't going to practice nothing. I'm not going to put it into work. And you know, it's not, I can go around and tell people, you know what, a little hint I learned today. You can do so and so and get so and so and so and so, but I'm not going to do any of it. Then I've wasted my time and you've wasted yours. All I'm asking is that of all the rewards, perhaps if you're sinless, then you can do little hijjah. I mean, sorry, you can do salatul tahajju. Or you can fast. Or you can do something that you don't normally do. But I want to encourage that. From the Fajr of the 9th of Dhul Hijjah up to Asr, prayer on the 13th, it is obligatory on each Muslim to recite the takbir of Tashriq after each obligatory prayer. And that's after each service. And right now, it looks like, and always this is within one day, right? And we know that some communities might do it one day. It shouldn't be during Hajj, but it does happen. Because you can't argue which day was Arafat in Saudi Arabia. But somehow, some of our people do. Eid al Adha is scheduled for Wednesday, the 23rd of September. Yes, mine and Warren's birthday. I, I didn't realize this, you know, but I'm old enough to be Warren's father. I'm going to be 57 and he's going to be 27, I think. Something like that. 22. 22. All right, brother. <laughs>
So alhamdulillah, um, the Eid I can cover later. We all know the takbir for Eid. Yes, little we Bible. know that there's a, all kind of different things that happen. I've covered this before. It's three Allahu Akbar's. La ilaha illallah wa Allahu Akbar. Allahu Akbar wa lillahi alhamd. Um, you know the meaning of this takbir? This is the authentic Adid. This is the one we should do. Qurbani. Pardon cut me? The, cut, cut the animal. Yes. You go back. Oh, sorry. Okay. Just let me know when you're ready. The happy person is the one who makes the most of these special months, days, and hours and draws near to his Lord during these times through acts of worship. He or she will most likely be touched by the blessings of Allah and will feel the joy of knowing that he or she is safe from the flames of hell. I, I want to ask you this. How many will commit that in these nine days you will either add something to your repertoire of spiritual blessings or you will take away from the opposite, something that takes away? How many will join me in that effort? Raise your hand. How many you know? You mean we have to do more? Uh, yes, you have to either do one thing more or one thing less if it's no, bad. No, inshallah I will do more. I said, that's a hand raise? Yeah. Okay, alhamdulillah. Yeah. <laughs> Very good. And you're not going to call anybody a terrorist. See, you can give up that. This, for nine days, I'm not going to call one anybody thing a terrorist. You taught, uh, one thing I learned today, I used to every day at the end of the day in bed, I, I always think what I did wrong today. Mm -hmm. I stopped that thinking. Now you reminded me, I will do same thing again now. Alhamdulillah. Inshallah. 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 But also think about what you did right today. Yeah. 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 Uh, I, that was the one, yeah, I, I covered this, didn't I? Yeah. Just let me know. Um, but while you guys are looking at that slide or copying it, if you need to, Surah 15, Al Hijra 99, worship your Lord until there comes unto you the certainty, death. Every one of us in this room are going to die. And there's no letting up. There should never be a day when we stop worshiping. Really, there shouldn't be a moment when we stop worshiping, but we're human. And we fall short. But remember these verses. These are the verses I would encourage you to take a picture of on your cell phone. Put a little note card on your car. And don't drive it while you're going down I-4 80 miles an hour because you might not give somebody their need. Because when you run off the road reading this verse, they may feel like you violated them. That was supposed to be funny. An astute believer multiplies the remembrance of death. Surah 22 of Hajj 28, that they might witness things that are of benefit to them and mention the name of Allah on appointed days over the beast of camel that He has provided for them for sacrifice. Can I go on? Yes. To perform Hajj or Umrah and accept it Hajj, Hajj Mahbruh brings no less a reward than paradise. Don't miss any of these important occasions. Time is moving quickly. Prepare by doing good deeds which will bring rewards when we are most in need of it. No matter what reward we earn, we will find it is less than we need at the time of departure. So no matter how much you give up this week or you add, on that day, you know what you're going to be wishing? You know when Imam Sykes encouraged me to do that, I wish instead of adding one to my list, I added ten. Or maybe a hundred. <laughs> we can give such a... The departure is promised. The journey is frightening. Delusions are widespread. The road is long. Allah is all-seeing. Watching all, he will render account. Make the most of Allah's favors these ten days and invaluable and irreplaceable. Hasten to good works before death comes. So we have a few minutes that I will move to um, 
inshallah, if they don't mess this up, to the other presentation. Alhamdulillah. So I'm going to pick up with purification of the soul. Even though a lot of what we just talked about will blend very beautifully with this. We know that purification of the soul deals with the heart. And if you can, Mason, make that big, please. Thank you. Hearts cannot obtain their desire unless they are connected with the Lord. What am I asking you to do? Isn't it fortuitous that we are addressing this in these greatest days of the year? Isn't it? First, I teach you the rewards, and then I show you about purification of the heart. It's a reinforcement. They cannot connect with their Lord unless they are pure, because Allah is pure and only accepts what is pure. The pure of the heart, the closer it will be to its Lord and enjoy being with Him. Purification of the soul means to purify and cleanse the heart of vices and immortal traits, while lending beauty to it with good deeds. And that's what I'm encouraging you to do in these days of exponential blessings. When we know our carnal desires, we can stay away from them. So again, I'm asking you, look at one of those carnal desires that you do, and avoid it for nine days. Look at something you've been avoiding, like let's say maybe I just don't read the Quran. This is hypothetical. About five or seven days of the week, I get up before Fajr and I spend an hour in my Arabic. That's my habit. Some weeks I manage seven days, and those are the weeks that I'm, I love. 